Welcome to our express service here at Reve Church. We're so glad you guys are here. Yeah, today's going to be powerful. Let's jump right in. A homeless woman named Kathy Boone lived on the streets of Astoria, Oregon. And Kathy, in January of 2020, uh, unfortunately uh, passed away in complete poverty. Now, the, the twist is, is that uh, Kathy actually had an inheritance that she was unaware of. Uh, But after uh, numerous emails were sent, Facebook messages, there was a newspaper uh, posting that was uh, trying to locate her uh, in Oregon. And there was actually a, 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 a private investigator that was hired to find Kathy Boone. They didn't find her. They couldn't locate her. Uh, And so she died unaware that she had this inheritance. A family member had left her one million dollars, just under one million. Uh, she had 900, just over $900,000 in the bank with her name on it that she was unaware of. And sadly, she, she passed away uh, not knowing about the inheritance that was left to her. It was hers, but she didn't know. Now, today we're starting a brand new collection of talks called The Ghost. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. Who is he? What does he do? What is uh, is his purpose uh, in our lives? How do we access the Holy Spirit? Now, this is an important topic because, uh, you know, the church over the years um, has done a really bad job in talking about uh, the Holy Spirit, partly in, in, in uh, that we've, uh, in some churches, have overemphasized the Holy Spirit. Some churches have underemphasized the Holy Spirit. I mean, in some churches you walk in and everything's about the Holy Spirit, right? The songs, the, 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 the message, all of that. But a lot of times we underemphasize the Holy Spirit. In fact, uh, there was a book written by Francis Chan called The Forgotten God, in which he talks about how the Holy Spirit is kind of like left out <laughs> a lot of times in our conversations and uh, in regards to the Trinity of God. You know, we're we're good with God the Father. I have a father. That makes sense to me. We're good with God the Son. I've seen pictures of Jesus with blonde hair and blue eyes. Have you seen ripped Jesus before? I just Googled that the other day and found it fascinating. (laughs) We're good with God the Son. But God the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, uh, not so much. But we have other misconceptions about the Holy Spirit, don't we? I mean, sometimes we think that the Holy Spirit is weird. <laughs> now, I was in Costco the other day, and, and I, I was uh, getting uh, something uh, for our men's event that we had last week, and, uh, and I was in the, the meat section, okay? And, and so I looked, and I saw uh, this. Do you see this picture? And ha- have you ever eaten cow tongue before? <laughs> What's so interesting is you can actually see the taste buds through the plastic wrapper here of this cow tongue. My neighbor, Eddie, he told me that it's actually delicious. I will take his word for that. (laughs) You see, cow tongue is weird. (laughs) But sometimes we miss out on the, the power of the Holy Spirit, the inheritance of the Holy Spirit that has been left to us because we think, we believe that the Holy Spirit is weird, in part because we have met weird people. who said that they had the Holy Ghost. I mean, I had a friend in, in college, and I won't say his name, but, but uh, he uh, was a great guy, dear friend, and he was in our college group. And one time we were praying as a group, and uh, my friend is American. He grew up in the United States. But during midway through his prayer, as we were praying, uh, he went into a British accent. Or Irish accent. I don't know what kind of accent it was, but he started going off like, you know, William Wallace in prayer. And it was a little weird. You see, sometimes we think the Holy Spirit is weird because we've encountered weird people, but those people were weird before the Holy Spirit. <laughs> but a lot of times we miss out on the Holy Spirit's power that's available to us because we have this thought that. Oh, he, he's just weird. And sometimes we, uh, have you ever done this? Uh, we equate the Holy Spirit with a feeling. 
I can't tell you how many pastors I've heard say, you know, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. And I'm not saying you can't feel the Holy Spirit. But when we equate the Holy Spirit with a feeling, we miss out on the power of the Holy Spirit. The third way we, we sometimes miss the Holy Spirit is we, we call the Holy Spirit an it. Right? H- have you ever done that? Jesus actually calls the Holy Spirit a person, calls the Holy Spirit him, the third part of the Trinity. In fact, in the scriptures, we see that uh, the Holy Spirit actually has emotions that we can actually grieve the Holy Spirit. See, we miss out. We miss out a lot of times when we have these misconceptions about the Holy Ghost. And and that's why we're doing this series where we're unpacking what the Holy Spirit is and and, and what he does and, and, and what his power and inheritance that he has available for us with our name on it and how we can access that. We don't want to miss out. But here's a question I want to answer. Well, what is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? Like what? Like God the Father, I get that. God the Son, I get that. But what is the purpose of the Spirit of God? Well, in high school, I had a friend. His name was Chris. And Chris was a senior. I was a freshman. And, and we became fast friends. And over time, something strange happened. I, I actually uh, became more and more like Chris the more I hung out with Chris. Now, for better or for worse, or uh, consciously or subconsciously, this, you know, thing just kind of happened, right? And, and I began to morph and morph and become more and more like Chris. And uh, again, some of this was not, was not good, okay? And, and occasionally, for example, we would, we would skip school, uh, to go surf. Now, I grew up on the East Coast, and uh, listen, we don't have any waves on the East Coast. I apologize for those of you who are watching uh, from the East Coast, but, but I, you know, we, we, have co- we have waves on the West Coast. We do not have waves on the East Coast, except when there is a hurricane season. Every year, a hurricane season happens between July and uh, November, and that's during the school year. Okay, and so one day, one day, Chris and I, we, we call the surf report. They didn't have the surf report online back when I was in high school. Okay, you had to call the surf report. There was no asking Siri. Hey, Siri, how's the surf in Del Mar? And it brings up Surfline. That, that didn't happen. We had to call the surf report. But that day, the waves were going off, right? They were, they were like shoulder high, head high. And we, we just had to get to the beach. So we skipped school. And we got in my, uh, Chris's uh, green Toyota truck, and we put our boards in the back, and, and we got to 11th Street. That was our spot. We got our boards out. We got our wetsuits on, and we're crossing this one-way street, and <laughs> we, we look out of the corner of our eye, and we see a blue Ford Bronco that looks strangely similar to the blue Ford Bronco that our vice principal drove. And as we're crossing the street, literally about to go surf while we're skipping school, our vice principal just kind of waves us across. <laughs> and just, hi, <laughs> Chris and Todd. And, and needless to say, Chris and I were in the vice principal's office the next morning. It was totally worth it, though. <laughs> but you see, Something strange happened in my relationship with Chris. I moved from being a friend of Chris to becoming like Chris. I began to talk like Chris. Sadly, I began to drink beer and do drugs like Chris. I got the same surfboard as Chris. I wore the same wetsuit as Chris. I became like Chris. You see, this is the purpose of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's purpose in your life and mine is to take you from being a friend of Jesus to a place of becoming like Jesus. That is the Holy Spirit's purpose in your life and in mine. To move us from being friends of Jesus, acquaintances of Jesus, to becoming more and more like Jesus in every area of our lives. We don't become like Jesus like we live Jesus' life. (laughs) 
No, we become like Jesus in our everyday practical lives. We become like Jesus in our marriages, in our relationships, in our working situation. That is the purpose of the Holy Spirit. Now, as we continue and and just kind of unpack this, and I don't want to uh, insult your intelligence by thinking that that I could in some way explain to you in entirety the the Holy Spirit to you in a 25-minute message. Or I I don't want to try to convince you in any way that uh, I in some way could understand completely all the nuances and and all the complexities of the Holy Spirit. But what we're going to try to do today is is, is look practically at the scriptures and and try to unpack some, some things that the Holy Spirit does in our lives that are so, so helpful. If you're taking notes, you can write this down. This is going to be on the screen as well. The first thing the Holy Spirit does is the Holy Spirit empowers you to live a holy life. Now, I I think this makes sense, right? Because holy is 50% of the name of the Holy Spirit. (laughs) So it makes sense that the, the Holy Spirit is actually going to empower you, empower me to live a holy life. I heard a pastor say this recently as I paraphrase his statement. He said, one of the saddest things that we can believe is that holiness is irrelevant. Holiness is not irrelevant. In fact, the relevance of holiness is so profound that holiness actually changed the world. Holiness changed the course of history. Holiness has given us eternity. Friends, holiness is absolutely relevant to our lives and the Holy Spirit can help us, can help you and me live a holy life. Now, I went to the College of Charleston and uh, in between classes outside of our cafeteria, uh, there was a guy who who would occasionally, he would get his soapbox, uh, literally, and and he would, you know, stand on it and and he would would yell in like a megaphone, (laughs) And he would say, turn or burn, right? This is like in the middle of classes, right? He would, he would yell, you know, turn to Jesus or burn in hell. That's what he would, he would yell. Let me, let me ask you this. How effective do you think <laughs> that guy was? How many converts do you think he got? Probably not very many. In fact, uh, Jesus says it this way in John 14, In verse 26, but when the Father sends the spirit of holiness, the one like me who sets you free, he will teach you all things in my name. What's Jesus saying there? He's saying that the Holy Spirit is going to come. He's going to send you. He's going to send me the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's going to empower us to live a holy life. He's going to teach us how to live our lives. And a big part of of how the Holy Spirit empowers us to live a holy life is by convicting us of sin. Now, uh, as you hear that phrase, convicting you of sin, that might sound like a giant negative. But I can assure you, it's more valuable than having a million dollars in the bank. Uh, conviction of sin by the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives can, help, can keep us from so much harm, from so much trouble, so from so much damage in our lives. Jesus said it this way in John 10 and verse 10. He said, I've come to give you life, life abundantly. Jesus said, I've come to give you a full life. Notice what Jesus did not say. Jesus did not say, I've come to give you a broken life. I've come to give you a jacked up life. No, we do that on our own. (laughs) Uh, You know, that's why Jesus can forgive you of your sin, but he cannot forgive you for your stupidity. (laughs) 
I'm joking. I'm joking as I have a fly around my head here. <laughs> no, Jesus came to give us a life abundant, a full life, a whole life. Right? And a part of, of how Jesus does that is through empowering us with the Holy Spirit. Again, to become more and more like Christ. And, and, and through that, he convicts us of sin. Guys, this is so helpful. I just want to mention uh, some of the benefits for me. Okay, this is for me. Some of the benefits of the Holy Spirit convicting me of sin. One of the benefits of, of the Holy Spirit convicting me of sin is, is I get to stay married. That's amazing, right? That's why, like, when I'm out at the gym or I'm at the beach and I see an attractive woman, I, I think to myself, that's not my wife. That's not my wife. You see, no one who commits adultery wakes up and says, wait, who are you? <laughs> where, where am I? <laughs> no, it, it's, a, it's a process, right? <laughs> it's, it's a path. You see, the Holy Spirit convicting me of sin, man, it helps me stay married. I, I like being married. I love my wife. Here's another benefit. The Holy Spirit helps me stay employed. <laughs> How many of you, you know, like having a job? I love my job. How many of you like getting a paycheck? Man, it's, it feels so good. You see, the Holy Spirit is so practical. When, when he convicts us of sin, he's keeping us on the right track. He's keeping us from harm. He is helping us live that full, abundant life that Jesus is talking about. The Holy Spirit helps me stay out of jail. I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> right? I wouldn't last. But the Holy Spirit helps us empowers us to live a holy life by convicting us of sin. So how does this work? Well, let's unpack this in Galatians 5 and verse 19. It says this, When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, the list goes on and on. These are the, the desires, these are the acts of the, self, of the sinful nature. Let me do a quick poll. Those of you who are watching this, uh, how many of you need some more envy in your life? How many of us need more division, dissension, hostility? Well, then the writer goes on. He says, this is the selfish nature, and it produces all of this. But let me, let me, let me uh, share with you what the Holy Spirit does. When the Holy Spirit convicts you of sin, when you allow the Holy Spirit to empower you to live a holy life, this is what happens in verse 22. But the Holy Spirit produces this. It's the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, self-control, gentleness, kindness. L let me do a quick poll. How many of you need more peace, joy, Love. Yeah, see, see, this is how we know. This is how we know. Is the Holy Spirit working in my life? Do you have more peace? Is the Holy Spirit working in my life? Do you have more joy? Do you have more love? Do you have more self-control? That means that the Holy Spirit is empowering you to live a holy life, convicting you of sin, leading you to that full abundant life that Jesus has for you and for me. Second, the Holy Spirit guides you. The Holy Spirit guides me. Uh, look at this next verse, John 16 and verse 13. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. 
So this word here for spirit, it, it, it's uh, literally in the Greek, it's parakletos. That comes from the Greek root word paraklete. And that, two, that, that word paraklete is really two words smashed into one. On one side, you have para, which means to come alongside. And then on the other side, you have kletos or cleat. That means called. So think about this. Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is called to come alongside you. Who's the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is, uh, another word uh, is used here, is your counselor, your guide, the parakletos. The Holy Spirit is called to come alongside you to help you, to guide you. I love this. So how does this work? How does the Holy Spirit guide us? And I just want to, I want to give you three ways. These are three ways that the Holy Spirit practically guides us in our lives. This is going to be on the screen. If you want to write this down, uh, you can do that as well. Number one, through circumstances. Man, I wish I would have known this 20 years ago when I became a follower of Jesus. That the Holy Spirit is actually orchestrating circumstances, communicating to you, to me, through circumstances. It's a big, big deal. In fact, uh, I love what Richard Meyer uh, says about this. Uh, and I'm quoting him here. Uh, he says, the circumstances of our daily life are to us an infallible indication of God's will. When they occur, when they concur with the inward promptings of the Spirit and with the Word of God, so long as they are stationary, wait. But when you must act, they will open and a way will be made through oceans and rivers. I love that. That's, that's a big way the Holy Spirit guides us is through circumstances. Here's the second. Impressions of the Spirit. Just sensing that God is calling you to something, sensing that God is saying something to you, it's an impression of the Holy Spirit. That's a way that God guides us. And third, uh, passages from the Bible. The scripture then becomes the boundaries of the first two. The scriptures become the boundaries of, of circumstances in my life and, and impressions of the Holy Spirit that I sense from God. You know, this is how, uh, how Reve started, right? Because uh, in 2017, Shannon and I, we, we had this impression from the Holy Spirit that we were being called to start Reve, to start a life-giving church here in San Diego. Well, what did we do? We went out and we, uh, we got wise counsel. We prayed. And through that process, circumstances began to open to us that, we, that were completely undeniable. And then, of course, the scriptures spoke to us so, so clearly that for God so loved the world that he sent his son and he's been sending people out ever since. You see, the Holy Spirit guides us through circumstances. The Holy Spirit guides us through impressions of the Spirit and through the Word of God. Let me ask you today, do you need some power to help you live a holy life? Have you been trying to do it on your own? <laughs> What's so fascinating about the Bible is that it's really not about our effort. It's not about our willpower. It's about the Holy Ghost giving you a power to live a holy life. Let me ask you, do you need some guidance today? That's available to you right now. I want to close by reading you this, this verse and I mean, we could spend the rest of the year, the rest of the next, you know, two years unpacking what this means. This is Roman 8, Romans 8 and verse 11. It says this, The Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives within you. The Spirit of God, 
that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. He wants to guide you. He wants to empower you. Hey, let's pray together as we close. God, thank you so much for uh, this moment. I pray for that person watching. God, that you would um, fill them with your Holy Spirit today as they pray. God, that they, that they need you to empower them. God, that you, would, that you would do just that. God, help us to live the lives that you've called us to. Help us to live the lives that you've created us for. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.